with a McDonald Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I am here with the comedic duo who are still together, despite some of the <laughs> rampant rumors on the internet. Wow. Brandy and Julie. I mean, I mean, I didn't know if you were going to come to my holiday party. I was just, like, <laughs> hearing things. Apparently, our friend Jeff Lewis um, started some shit because yeah. he didn't want to do anything else but talk about you guys. Yeah, so just... What happened? Wow. Just the shit I got the exclusive, right? <sighs> you what do. Ha- what is going on? You're together still? Yeah, we are. I mean, it was really... It was really... There was really no there there. We okay. we got into a fight and we didn't basically. You and Julie got yeah, an argument. Julie and I and we did not go to happy hour. Okay. We didn't wow. make it to but basically problem, happy hour. We we and the but to give them to to to, to be fair, we did say we were going. And okay. on the way there, we got into a fight. <laughs> we got into a fight. Really? And Do you guys fight often? No, no. Oh, I mean, that is pretty juicy, then. Yeah, <laughs> but we do, and it was about it was like about business stuff. So okay. it was. Um, I'm problematic when it comes to holding on to details and doing things in a detailed, organized manner. And sometimes I drop the ball, and when I do, it can cause a problem. And Brandy is. Psychotic. Psycho. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like you guys yeah. are perfect business partners. <laughs> yeah. She's absent minded and I'm insane. So oh, okay. I think that's and I great. love money and don't want to lose any. Okay. Ever. I don't want to lose any money either. <laughs> but well, I'm not good with it. So then I guess you talked about it on a show and everyone thought you guys were kaput. Done. Yeah. Never talking again. I mean, so then I had my sh- my party and um, this is my TikTok that has gone viral. Oh, I did a talk show saying I threw at a party for 18 people to celebrate oh my for my podcast and nobody came. And it's kind of like a, a theme that's going on TikTok. And some people actually really thought oh. it was true. But Chris came. Um, but you guys both came. It was nice. It was and so nice. You did do an Irish goodbye, though. We you do, left before we, the big group photo. I didn't. We yeah. didn't know that, that. If we had known that was going to happen, we would have done that. But in general, <laughs> yes, we both are Irish goodbye people. We hate saying goodbye. Okay, it feels too. Listen, the much. drinks were flowing oh for God. free on you. <laughs> Thank you. And we did have very many of them. The martini. <laughs> we took an Uber, a hundred yeah. dollar Uber, all the way out to Woodland Hills. Well, it's worth it. And we were like oh. getting it on. The martinis. The were... martini. First of all, I want to just say it oh was at Larson's in the private God. room in the Woodland Hills Village, and I have never had a better party in my life oh. in all of my years, including my wedding, <laughs> kids' parties. <laughs> And it's because, A, it wasn't at my house Mm. because everyone got the drink they wanted Mm -hmm. and it was huge, large servings. Oh, Oh my God. Like, the martinis are so good there. (laughs) They came in the kind of martini glasses that burlesque dancers do (laughs) dances in. (laughs) They literally came in that. And it was so good. And then I was like, I oftentimes suffer from post-party depression. Mm. Yeah. Where the next day I'm either, like, hungover or I felt like, Oh God! There was such a hype, and this happened, or something bad happened, or someone disappointed me by not showing up. Mm. No, none of that happened. It was just absolutely perfect. And I want to say, on behalf of, uh, I mean, first of all, thank you for having us, and it was so fun, the and I got was so, so drunk good too, and the food was so fucking good. Um, we, for for anyone you know who cares, I mean, us and Chris Frangiola are like best friends. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people were sorry. Con- a lot of people were concerned that because Chris does get really jealous, <laughs> it's been something he's working on his whole life. Uh, as much as I try to stroke his ego, um, he was the first there. He was there since five. He was there at five <laughs> with his wife because they have a baby that, like, when you get a sitter, you have to like leave like hours mm-hmm. before and like sneak out a window, whatever. So they were there early on with bells on and. Um, but he was nice to all the other com- competing co-hosts. And I thought what, that was very mature of him. Was he there oh. when we got there? I don't remember oh, that. Oh, yeah. He was the first there. I mean, That's- I just remember meeting him in the – Oh, okay. In the, amongst the mingling. And we were just – it was just love. It was just love. And, he's, he, and he is lovely. Oh, and I want to say about my TikTok that went somewhat <laughs> viral. Not totally viral. I think it's like 200,000 views, whatever. But I was at a house party over the weekend, like at someone's house in the mm. valley. And this guy, like, looks at me and he's like – I just 
I just saw you in my feed. No one came to your party. Oh. He didn't know me as a comedian from Juicy Scoop, from Chelsea Lately. No, he just was like, that's the girl where no one came to her party. Well, you wow. look so pretty. Like, look Thank how you. beautiful you look. So it's I like, agree. I'm sure it was very memorable. <laughs> it was the best. It I do want to say best. that yes. you, did you let your um, all of your listeners know that you put me and Peter at the end of the table? <laughs> Here's the thing. It was a long table, and uh-huh. Annie has nice writing, and she did place cards. Because oh, there we're was blaming Annie. Seventeen people, <laughs> and then I realized what's so great about the private rooms. Everyone got to mingle and have drinks and stand yeah. up and mm-hmm. talk. So then I said, forget about the place mm-hmm. cards. The only thing I cared about was putting Bobby, Josh Flag's husband, next to me because he was the only single person. Oh. So I was like. And he didn't know a lot of you guys. So I wanted to make sure that he felt comfortable. Everybody else, I was like, you guys know each other. You'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. But it was very hard. And then Chris came and then he rearranged them. (laughs) Oh, he did? And then my sister came and then she (laughs) rearranged them. And I go, just sit where you want to sit, you know? But like, it was fine. Oh, my God. It was was great. Yeah. It was so great. It was great. Um, Another thing I did last night was go to a movie premiere. (gasps) I saw Tender Bar on Prime Video because Ben Affleck was there. As you can see, he's doing a QA and a at the end. There he is on the Ooh. end. Look at it. Look, there he is. Do you wow. see right there on the end right there? I can sure see do. his hair plugs from here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know what was going on with the hair in the movie. It was like from the late 70s, mid 80s. It's like a coming of age movie. And he plays the uncle that runs the bar. And they gave him like this weird wig. And I was like, why do you need a wig, dude? Mm. Anyway, I'm going to review the movie more on Patreon. But we went... We stayed for the Q&A. Then we walked across the street to the Roosevelt Hotel. Took a little lap. Peter Peter was acting like he hadn't been out in years. We lost our car. <laughs> he was like, what? Where do we go? What do we do? And then when we're leaving, he's like, wait, I go in here? Wait, I go to the chat. We had to I was like, what is wrong? We've been to movie. For, we've been to so many in our life, not to brag, but like throughout the years, I've had publicists. And that was about the only thing he got me to was like to go to like a kid's <laughs> show. Mm. And, and then we walk into the um, place like to get the food. And he's like, Oh, this is nice. I go, yeah, they made the room look like the bar in the movie. He's like, what? He's like, where did they get all these books from? Prop department. (laughs) We're in Hollywood. It's a movie premiere. It's a theme. They They have bar food. They really did it. about a bar. An old school movie premiere. Like the way they, they, that's like, that is like Mm. early off. However, they said I was not welcome on the red carpet. (gasps) They did? What? Well, you know. Why? Well, if you're going to do the red carpet, then you had to get the COVID test. If you were going to go see the movie, you just had to show your vaccine card. And and they're like, but you can take movies at the after party. And I was just like, okay. By, by far, I was like, I mean, okay. So I don't you know why they didn't want me all the thing. But I wouldn't have wanted to do all that anyway. So I was fine. Not You didn't want to go on the step and repeat? I would, but not if I had to go do a test and everything. Oh yeah, that's a, that's I irritating. Mean, Did they have rapid tests right there? Or you had to go before, no, be like down at Rite Aid, get the test? Go, go and do the test bef- uh, and all that. Then I hope no one was on the red carpet because that is the thirst of the century. <laughs> I went to the Tender Bar. This was this was the name of the show. I'm waiting. Where is Ben? He Guess what? He didn't come to the after party. So after my tiny burger... And my tiny Caesar salad on an end dive. <laughs> I was like, Peter, let's wrap it up. It's been a long day. We already went to a fabulous country club party at the Sherwood Country Club with the kids. That was like a movie set. It was like a, it was like a utopia of the best looking people from 70 to seven weeks old. There were just babies. There was fake snow. Mm. Ooh, very. It was just, it was like, where Very the white privilege. So now- it, it was, it was, it was. <laughs> Even more than the Caesar salad on the end dive. <laughs> oh, it was everything. I was like, oh my, where the hell am I? This is amazing. It was so fun. Okay, let's talk about what we what it really came here for. And just like that, are we gonna? Am I gonna ever get in the mood of calling it? Ch- and just like that, no. no. Okay, we so, must keep calling it Sex in it the City. To, it is Sex in the, the city. city. That's what it is. So much to discuss. I talked a little bit about it on Patreon. I had only seen the first episode. Now I've seen the Ugh. two stop it. I'm not going to even worry about your fucking spoiler alerts. And the whole world knows, okay, what the show is about and, and what happened in it. Let's get your opinion of just, in general, what did you think, the characters, where it's going, what did you think? I will say I had to immediately go and 
I was because I felt like something I was like, what's off? Like, why is this not like Sex and the City? I had to immediately go on YouTube and look at like old Sex and the City scenes to figure out. It's not just that Samantha's not there or whatever. It's it's to me, it was the lighting. Sex and the City was a lot darker. Interesting. I just felt like it was so bright. It just doesn't it honestly like for me, I mean, I don't want to just be like super <sighs> negative about it, but it just really wasn't happening for me. I didn't I Out didn't, of all the articles I've read and all the comments, nobody has focused on the lighting. I, really, I thought the lighting was fine. You did? <laughs> yeah. You <didn't> think, <laughs> like that's not I just didn't I seem was, like a TV show. They were filming it like a movie. Julie, uh, Julie, tell me exactly your <laughs> initial thought, and then we'll go through each character. And I mean, just journey. the reality of women's lives. I just think it's really important and wonderful. <laughs> um, uh, uh, hi. I thought that it was insufferable, and I thought that it was not funny, and I thought that it... So not funny. I thought that it was basically should be called... And here's a hammer, and now we're going to hit you over the head with it five million times in the city. Because (laughs) I could not believe what I was witnessing. This is how I watched it. I could not believe it. I was literally watching it like this. I was cringing so bad. I was covering my eyes. I couldn't watch. I was so secondhand embarrassed. I I I took a screenshot. (laughs) All I got from Julie was text like this. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Can you believe this? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. I have OMG. been to lesbian drum circles that were less insufferable than this movie <laughs> shows than these two shows. I have been around women's music festivals that are less insufferable than this show. I cannot believe <laughs> that they did this. I truly, I'm in shock. I'm in. I'm in shock. I'm shocked. And then to have a podcast in oh, it. Just, oh, just, well, oh, horrific. For the Juicy Scoopers, to the hundreds and thousands of Juicy Scoopers that wrote me and said, my God, Heather, <laughs> you have been right. I have been writing Sex and City 3 since Sex and the City 2 ended. Then when I heard there was a show, right from the start, um, I said, Big's got to die so mm. that she can date. I said, Miranda's going to be a lesbian. And I said, um, uh, in the last two years, when I heard this show was happening finally, I said, she'll have a podcast. And, uh, I mean, you're welcome. You're fucking welcome. <laughs> uh, thank you, Sex and City writers that listen to me. But if Carrie ends up broke <laughs> because oh, Big did no. some shady shit with the secretary Mm-mm. and she has to do Patreon, I'm fucking <laughs> done! <laughs> Stop stealing my life. <laughs> and if Miranda tries stand up, I'm fucking oh my done. God. This, and there's already a fucking comedian in it. Oh, yeah. But I could. Because uh, I'm like, stop. it better be, her secret better be, Miranda, that she is uh, struggling with alcoholism because she's truly a lesbian and she's always hit it all these years and she realizes it now. If it's that she is not secretly a lesbian, but <laughs> secretly a stand up comic, <laughs> I am fucking done. Like, yeah. no, that can't happen. But I'm putting it out there because there's a weird satisfaction I get knowing that the Sex and the City writers are just following my life and fucking (laughs) mocking it. Mocking it. Like, she's such a loser, Carrie, (laughs) that she can't sell a book anymore. She's so irrelevant that she has to be a third co-host on a podcast that nobody would watch or listen to. The worst podcast ever 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 <laughs> ever created on the planet <laughs> when i tell but it's you a hit. It's it a was hit. it's a beautiful oh it's a studio. hit beautiful she with has a elevators she with actually elevators. Paid. Oh, she, had to, she had to do a job interview she, it was like they were at sirius xm it was like they were i i i was like oh you're in an elevator from your podcast job like i in a in a in a, in a, in a, in a new york yeah, yeah. <laughs> I and mean. like talking about like, and you better do this and you better do that on the podcast. Like what is, go- what planet are these people on? I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I'm still in shock. Okay. I'm still in shock. She's going to go back. You think she's going to go back to the, her old apartment for sure. Oh, well, the, the question, the, the other predictions are, was there some shady stuff happening 
Like, is she broke after? We can't. After I will big. not. You she, cannot have Arthur too. You can't have the movie Arthur where he's rich <laughs> and Liza Minnelli gets rich, and then you have Arthur Two on the Rocks. Arthur uh, Two on the Rocks doesn't work. Nobody wants to see rich Arthur, rich Liza Minnelli become poor Liza Minnelli, poor poor Dudley Moore. You can't have it. Well, we will lot, not have it. Some people were saying, "What happened to Miranda? Miranda was the coolest one we had. She was like the like. She was really. Cool. That's what they thought. I thought." <laughs> Was there anybody dorkier than Miranda there was, and Sex oh my and God. the City 2? There's no one dorkier. I'm my job. Like, you know, I'm doo 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 I'm doo doo Like, she was this so dorky. This is great, dorky. Steve. I love it. And she yeah, was no. so dorky in... So I was like, but the fact that, like, just the tr- trying so hard... Oh and then God. other people were like, uh. but wasn't that maybe how a white woman in New York that thought she was really liberal and open-minded might be stepping over herself, like trying to go to this, you know, get her graduate degree or whatever, become a social justice person. And she's in this class. I was like, I call bullshit on your outfit on the first day. Really heels and a dress while you're in the subway. Shut up. (laughs) You're 55. Okay, you're not wearing heels unless it's like a major event. You you are avoiding heels at all times. And also, 55, all I could think about, like all my friends were like, is this going to be us in a few years? Like, they're, why are they so elderly? I'm like, why is Steve deaf? Why is Steve That's deaf? What, she literally why texted me, why deaf? is Steve deaf? I was like, probably doesn't listen to fucking Miranda become a lesbian. The, I, I, I wonder if the guy's actually, maybe. maybe. Somebody said He's that probably... he has struggled with hearing, so they oh, wrote okay. it in. Oh. The other thing, though, Every... I was just kind of like, Okay. Uh, oh, uh, what were you saying? The other thing. Go ahead. What was your other thought? Um, I can't. My. Um, I don't <laughs> or I'll know. talk more, and then I'll remind you. <laughs> also, Miranda, um, do n- I do not want to see Brady, your son, who's oh seventeen, oh. making oh out with a girl in the going to the recital, making out with her. I don't all the time, and then they're like having full loud banging sex. Like I understand people know that their kids are sexually active. But and then you'd be so freaked out that he like smoked a little pot at the thing, like freaking out. He's smoking pot at the. Funeral. We heard him go, "Ride me like a cowboy." Uh uh uh, bang bang bang. We watched them actually have sex. I was him. so grossed out by it. Beyond, and I fast then forwarded it. I, I like, couldn't get to the remote fast enough. What was and- grosser, them having sex or having to watch? Big in an unflattering angle, <laughs> masturbate with dad glasses on. I fast forwarded that. Too. I did he I, did he masturbate? Yeah, he fully masturbated because the because the non binary uh, co host yeah. comedian who's hysterical. She is hilarious. <laughs> I wasn't embarrassed at all for anyone that is embodies you know what that. I also want to say I couldn't, ta- a, I couldn't take it. I couldn't take I it. I want to say also as a comedian, whenever <sighs> there is a stand up comedian featured in a scripted show that's a female. It's the worst stand-up material ever. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, writers, if you have a part for a female comic, please come to me. I will will (laughs) sign off on some of my retired material just so that actress can look remotely funny. Like, none of the – so, of course, Sheeta isn't saying funny things. Oh, okay. Bobby Lee is, like, laying – about to kill himself there. Oh, Like, the most unfunny guy ever. And he's like, yeah, I'm just on – I'm just on a subway. When are you not masturbating on a subway? Gross. That whole thing was next level. (laughs) So tragic. Tragic, garbage, dumb, idiotic, moronic, whatever. I want to say this is my thought. This is my thought. The, and I, I I don't know how else to say it. It's so like with Miranda doing the thing with going to the thing and becoming a social active warrior. It was it reminds me of when the L word first came out. The show spends its time commenting on what they're doing rather than doing it. So here we are just a couple of 55 year olds at a table <laughs> rather than just being 55. being 55 and sitting at the table. So uh, what are we going to do now? I don't know. There I was blowing Harry or whatever. It's like, let, why don't you let some of that breathe rather yeah. than comment on every single thing, whether it's non-binary, cisgender, do, do, do this, that, and the other thing. It's like, just embody it, be it, lead. But also but- it's like, thanks for shitting on podcasting. When the girl comes <laughs> up, she's like, got to do a podcast. It's basically jury duty now. And then Miranda's like, what is, how oh, yeah. is that? That little <laughs> podcast hearing thing that you do. It has that Instagram going. Well, you know, I got to do it because no one's reading books anymore. And yeah. <laughs> and then 
Okay, so... <laughs> All right. Last I also one. feel like it's supposed to be like it's Sex in the City. So, what, but all, and they want to make this big production about how they're all older and nobody talk about how they look older and blah, 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 and their face work. And so fine. But all they're doing is then putting them in young people scenarios. They make Miranda go to school, which right. is with all young people. Right. They make Carrie go with young people on the podcast. Right. right. And even with Miranda, it's like, so her son's actually having sex, not her. Right. Because, you know, Sex in the City is at 55. It's you and Peter looking for your car. <laughs> right. I mean, even though you're not, you know what I mean? It's it's like nobody's having sex in the city at that age. That's why it does. That's why you're having to put them in school and shit. Right. It's, it's so I felt like that was like. Of course, now Big's dead, and she's going to go date and probably go on dating apps. I guess. And that uh, will no, be... I, the podcast guy is hot, so they'll, <laughs> they're they're going to fuck soon. Another oh, okay. prediction. There but without with the, but once... without Samantha, who's going to do the hardcore shit? Because in the show and in the movie, Sarah Jessica Parker doesn't. Carrie doesn't. She does a little, but she doesn't like show off too much. It was Samantha right. that did the heavy lifting. Samantha had to get after the B. Me, who I mean, loved everything. the show, even though it was called Sex and the City. To me, it was about dating and relationships and funny stuff and fashion and their friends. Yeah, the sex stuff that would come in. Some of it would gross me out. Like speaking of Samantha, like I remember the grossest scene was when she and they later. I think they cut it out of reruns, but in the she squirted on that Latina lesbian uh, lover. What? What? Yeah. Ew. You mean she peed on her? No, like she was going down on her and then she like, no, no, the girl squirted on Samantha. (laughs) So she just, anyway, she just jizzed all over Samantha's face. When we come back, I have a special treat. (laughs) Okay. Before we get to my special treat, I want to just talk about Charlotte, Charlotte's life. So Charlotte's still married to the attorney. She has her adopted daughter, Lily, and her younger biological daughter, Rose. And um, they insist that everyone has to go to their – I mean, I would never invite my kids to any – my friends to anything that my kids did, ever. (laughs) Ever. Never have. Yeah. Okay? Speaking of, is that brand – was that Brandon out there? That's Drake. Oh, that's Drake. Yes. Okay. Yes. But I'm not going to make you go to the golf course and watch him hit a ball. <laughs> and I wouldn't have done it if he was little. I never even – I barely could ask my parents to inconvenience them to come to something. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, like, certainly not that. But she has a really good penis and she's the delight and the other one is whatever, I guess, a brat. So, um, Charlotte – but here is the thing. So, let's get right to the sad part. So – Big dies getting off the Peloton while she's at the concert. And so then when they start doing the funeral stuff, it Charlotte goes, I feel so bad if I hadn't made you go to see Lily perform. You would have been there with Big. This isn't about you, Charlotte. This isn't about you. God. And so this is pretty juicy. Um, Lily is the culprit. Lily has been ruining Carrie's life for 20 years. I did not come up with this. This tweet came from Baja Blast for Eva. So if you remember from the movie, for Eva. Eva, at Carrie's wedding to Big, it was Lily who took her cell phone and put her into her Judith Lieber cupcake sparkly purse. If Big would have gotten to talk to Carrie, she would have talked him down, they would have gotten married, and we wouldn't have had to deal with her dyeing her hair brown and <laughs> and the second half of that movie which sucked. Oh. So Lily, now it's Lily's concert as well. Also, it was Charlotte who said you know, when her water broke in the movie, she said, I curse the day you were born! She said that to Big. So Charlotte and Lily have been <gasps> wow, kind of ruined Big's life. They're like the Maleficent Of Big. The other part of this, who's also ruined Big's life, is me. (laughs) Because I met Chris Noth at a party in Vegas. And I did my Samantha uh, Kim Cattrall impression while on stage at this event. And we hit it off, exchanged numbers. He invited me to a Christmas party. Two did you guys years have a tour in a row. Affair? We absolutely did not. His oh, wife is very nice oh, okay. and I gorgeous, and I have okay. a husband. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it's at this party at his house in Sherman Oaks on December 6, 2014. After a few Chardonnays, I started to talk to people about what a fan I was of Sex and City. And he goes, Do, do the Kim Cattrall impression. And we're sitting in this backyard, and I'm doing it. 
And I said, but you know, if there's a Sex the City in three, Sex Sex and the City three, Big's got to die. Carrie's got to perform, you know, got to date again. And he was like, looked at me, and I, I didn't realize, like, oh my god, what did I just say? <laughs> Big dies. He's not going to be in, be able to be in future stuff. And and we took the photo before I said that. You can see he's having a good time. He's yep. enjoying me. Mm-hmm. Yep. Also, that dress I happened to have bought at Nordstrom's, and they didn't take off the sensor. <laughs> so I have the sensor on the other side of the leg. Because I was so excited to wear the dress. You are straight up frozen in time. Is this from 2014? 2014. And um, anyway... Um, I he's have into it there. I but now he's, he's so into it. But then he got he's off he got off it, right? <laughs> so then years later I have the podcast. And I reach out to him. And this is probably like maybe a year after this or something. And I say, Will you do the podcast? And you know, he's like, just call me. What is this? A little, mm. a little grumpy, you know. <laughs> and I said, Well, I just you know, I want to talk about your career and everything. And he goes, Well, if Sex and City comes back, I just want it to be that Carrie and I travel the world together. And we're just like retired and travel the world together. I'm like, well yeah, because you're acting, that'll be fun, you know. <laughs> and um he was very upset about having to come from Sherman Oaks to Sunset where I used to record during we went there. During mm-hmm. a, a time I got a stricter time that I had to do it because I didn't have my own studio. And you I had just, a, probably had that was a nice studio. Yeah, and I like just the said, show. you know what, Chris, I don't want to push you to do this podcast. I'd like to keep you as a friend. I feel like you're like not into this at all. And I just kind of was like, let me blow it off. So then I texted him the other day about something. And like he got we we talked to someone that was like a mutual friend. And he wrote me back and he's like, I'm in New York. What is this podcast thing again? So I sent him like the latest episode number three or whatever it was. And um, and then I wrote him and I said, what the fuck? You died. At least Carrie got to screw you one last time before you croaked. <laughs> he did not respond. So I sent him this photo and I just said, this was right before I said that Big needed to die. <laughs> I put it out in the universe and now you're dead. I hope there's a lot of flashbacks. Oh, yeah. And I apologize. I apologize that the writers listened to me. I apologize. <laughs> if I would have pushed with the narrative of I want to see them cheat on each other, I want to see them become swingers, if I would have pushed for that more sexual, later in life, 55-year-old couple that is just kind of bored with each other but still want to stay together and fuck, I could have kept big on the show. So I just want to apologize to everybody. And now the is other worst— totally ghosting you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, you I know mean, what? You, you, we ruined his, his latest acting job. But he can go back on The Good Fight. He can go on The Good Wife. He can go. He's was got he on The Good Fight? Do. He was on The Good Wife. Oh, he works oh. all the time. I mean, he's, you know, great. He's fine. I but you saw the Peloton thing. The, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. I don't think Julie has seen the commercial. So the Peloton, they brought back. So he, <laughs> they did this They did this video that went out, like, everywhere to TikTok and everything, where he is sitting by the fire and he's with the Peloton woman, Allegra, or whatever her name was. And so that's what it was. He's alive, but he left Carrie for Allegra. Oh, I see. Yes. Uh-huh. And, mm-hmm. um, and then they do a whole thing that <clears throat> Peloton is good for your body, and it doesn't cause hard things because the, plummet, the stock plummeted. There's yeah. been various theories about it. Did, they, did Peloton know? Did Peloton just be happy? They, thought they were so excited to have Peloton be featured, and then they were like, what? They couldn't throw it together Pel- that quickly. They had to have known. Peloton said that they, a spokesperson, I read that a, a spokesperson said they didn't know what was going to happen. That oh. they just thought he was going to ride the Peloton. They didn't know he was going to die. And then, of course, people are like throwing their Pelotons into a fire because apparently you're going to have a heart attack. I will say Peloton, I've but. worked out since I watched it. And yeah. I think about it now every single time. I'm like, is this mm-hmm. when I just like big out right here? I'm going to have a heart attack while I'm like. I'm but so if you happy do. to say that I hate cardio and I don't do it. I know. I hate so cardio I'm living too. forever. I just want to say this. If, I, <laughs> if this were to happen, though, I want it to be known. If I'm having a heart attack yes. and I drop dead under the cascading shower. Yes. And I drop my phone. And I can't reach it. Right. And you come in and you see me and I'm like, Ugh. and rather than hold me, I want you to call 911. <laughs> I agree. I want you to call and see that we can maybe salvage this life. I also have something to confess. 
<laughs> there have been many a times when Peter has not made me happy. <laughs> and I have wondered if I walked in and saw him <laughs> struggling like a turtle on its back. <laughs> Like would I? I always, like, I always oh. have said, listen. If he ever goes tragically, let it be when we're actually fighting. People think it's worse. I disagree. The blow will be a lot easier if you are like in a fight than if you just had sex, dancing around your kitchen, mm -hmm. ready to go to the Hamptons. <clears throat> Rich as can be, you know. But being oh, on a stupid he's podcast, smoking the cigar with the light coming in, like I just want to look at you. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. And oh, also, fuck by yourself. the way, a couple weird things. A couple weird things. The shoes, at least my TV, uh. the shoes looked purple. They were blue in the movie. He goes, those are your wedding shoes. They looked purple to me. The other thing, now, this is a phenomenon I've put out there. A lot of people have written me. When he's singing the song to her, mm. did your subtitles come on in Portuguese for no reason? <laughs> yes. They did? Nobody yes. knows why. That is a bigger his mystery to the, the Peloton thing. So please tell me why Sexist City writers who are listening to Juicy Scoop right now, why? What What was the point of doing Portuguese subtitles when he was singing? I didn't notice that. Because I, I was weird. like, did I accidentally put on yeah. the subtitles? Yeah. I, for some reason, thought it was French. Just quickly. I don't know. I thought it was Spanish. So okay. that people let me know <laughs> it's Portuguese. Sure right now oh, okay. I'm acting smart like I thought <laughs> okay. you know, it was Portuguese. I just knew it wasn't I was like, English. Yeah, you really recognize that language. It was just not English. Yeah. Um, I don't like Big. I mean, I just wasn't a fan of him on the show. I okay. mean, I would be classify myself as more of an Aiden gal. Okay, yeah. I didn't like his constantly talking and sexual innuendos. <laughs> I couldn't stand. Did you? Were you for their relationship? Were you here for it? I was because I liked like his wealth and I yeah. liked that whole life that he brought to her. And you know, just like that, he said, "I got it." <laughs> You got it. I've died and gone to real estate heaven. Hello, lover. That's like how she'd act. And so anyway. What did he do? Like what for a living? Oh, he was like a big financial hedge fudge guy. Oh, okay. Which totally makes sense. Hey, kid. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> you want to go it. romp around in the moonlight later? Meaning everything in innuendo. Yeah. You want to do some dancing under some blankets? I mean, they did all they, – they both smoked a lot. Okay. So – it, you know, you know who smoked so much. Ben Affleck's character in that movie, The Tender Bar, he smoked every single scene, and he is a smoker. He, yeah, yeah, well, I would think he's an I, alcoholic, so he's probably say, trying to. If you're trying to get a big star to do a movie, write in the fact that he's a heavy smoker, because then the actor is like, "Great, mm -hmm. I just smoked my way through this thing." <laughs> yep, yeah. Even if he wasn't a smoker, you have it doing the whole time. Adam, Adam yep. smoking, they love well, it. Charlize there on and. Yeah, we could get her to do anything. We could get her to do this podcast because she had to go to like a like a hypnotist like four times. Like she cannot quit smoking. Mm. Let's get Charlize on on Juicy Scoop so okay. she can smoke all up in here. All right, let's do it. <laughs> um, so anyway, let's talk about Samantha. Mm. So, so in real life, Kim Cattrall did not want to do anymore. And, you know, and it's a lot of reasons, you know, they, she felt age shame. She felt like they weren't really her friends. She, you know, um, she was done playing the part. You know, if Sex and City 2 was just all about her, like, mm, Abu Dhabi and my Punani. Why am I so horny? I'm all dried up down there. And they're like, like you're in menopause. And it's like, you're only five years behind me, fucking bitches. Like, shut up. So anyway, she moved on. And then they wrote her saying, you know, let's let's talk about how. You're not. Fr we're not friends with her anymore. She went to London. She's completely ghosting Carrie's texts. Then Big dies, and she just sends a beautiful thing of flowers. Probably would have been like six hundred dollars worth of flowers. Uh, I love Samantha. Okay, so I came up with this idea yesterday, and I texted you guys. I go, <laughs> I'm pretty excited <laughs> because I figured it out. We are now in Sex and City, okay? Mm -hmm. We are living in Sex in the City. You guys have your podcast, Brandy and Julie, mm -hmm. and you're kind of annoyed by the X, Y, and Me podcast that carries on because a lot of people are getting into it and are, like, comparing you to, like, you know what? You should have them on. They're great. And you're like, I thought you were my loyal listener. Okay, so you're annoyed. <laughs> Someone sent you a DM saying, I know... Carrie's ex-best friend, Samantha, she lives in a flat next to me in London. 
Here is her info. We, you start DMing Samantha. You got her on the podcast, and she's here right now. I'm oh. going to be Samantha. You got her on. I'm doing a Zoom. We uh, We are beyond excited. You know, all we've been hearing about is this X, Y, and me podcast, which oh. honestly, we can't even deal with. Like, Hate X, it. Y, and go fuck yourself. Right, <laughs> Samantha? Oh, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I just started listening to podcasts. You girls are hilarious. Oh, oh my god! So nice. Thank you so much. Mm. Now, have you listened to Carrie's? I have not. <laughs> Here's the thing: I was trying to make it such a big deal over Carrie and I. We had a lot of fun. We fucked a lot of guys. We were the toast of the town in New York City. But let me tell you something: once she married Big, she became Big Boring. <laughs> Wow, it was absolutely <laughs> hell going to these luncheons. I mean, let's be honest. I never really was that close to Charlotte. I mean, that little twi- tight twat never, <laughs> never made me laugh a day in my life. And I mean, Miranda, I mean, she's interesting, but come on. I mean, I couldn't really take it. I wasn't really good friends with them. What you girls don't know is that I had a whole nother group of friends that were fabulous. <laughs> really? They were richer. They were more <sighs> interesting. We went on trips. We went on yachts. We were in Belize. We went to Ibiza. Oh we went God. everywhere. <laughs> then I'd come back to New York City and, you know, split some fries with Charlotte and hear about her dumb kid Lily's piano. I couldn't wait to leave America and get some fucking London uncircumcised dick up in here. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened with you guys? Did she fire you as her publicist? Well, listen, I've been a publicist for a lot of people. Um, every time she'd have a book, I'd get a photo shoot together. You saw that one. You've probably heard about that one time we d- disagreed with things. There's other times I felt she became very hypocritical and judgy. Mm. I was working a long day at the office and a hot UPS man came in. <laughs> and, you know, there's nothing I like than a sweatier dick on a hot day in New York City after he's been delivering packages. And I said, you know what I want to do before my next meeting? I want to blow this guy. So I got on my knees and I was blowing him. And then Carrie just walked in the office unannounced. And it was awkward. You know, I was like, really, Carrie? And I felt she was very, very judgy. And you know what? We never totally recovered from that. Yeah, I mean, that sounds like you're, you're, you're just the girlfriend code there. Is she's just really overstepping her bounds there. I mean, right? do we have to have to remind you that she cheated on Aiden with Big? I mean, who's the moral compass here? Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, if in a situation between Samantha, no, that's you, between Miranda, Carrie, and Charlotte, Charlotte yeah. if you had to F, Mary, kill those three, what, what are we doing with those? You know what I mean? Oh, my God. Well, um, hmm. I'd actually kill Miranda. <laughs> us, too. Yes. You know, I think I, I, she's got to go immediately. I don't want to hear about her new career going to school. No. I don't want to hear her fumble over the wrong mm-hmm. pronouns mm-hmm. and woke stuff. I mean, my God. Here mm-hmm. in London, everybody just says what they want to say. And that's a great time. Um, I would marry Charlotte because I think mm. she's got the real money. Okay. Yes. And um, <clears throat> and I don't have to see that bitch. She's the kind of person that you could be married and never see him. And then I would fuck Carrie because you know what we did? We did a lot. A lot of people didn't know that. But one day I was very, very horny and Carrie had a shoulder spasm. And I said, you know what works for a shoulder spasm? A good old cuddlingus. And I went down on her. Because I don't know if you guys remember, I was a lesbian for a short stint. Really? Yes, she was a beautiful what? Mexican what? artist. Uh-huh. And I met her. And I said, okay, I think I'm ready to have baths with this girl. But then she got so boring. Meanwhile, oh, I, I went you... down on her and she squirted yeah. in my eye. That's what I recall. That was wow. right before I got cancer. <laughs> That's just not, that isn't usual. That's just not usual. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, wow. I mean... I would go with that. But you know what? I'm Do you think that done. gave you cancer? Do you think that gave you can- the cancer? Well, you know, I don't really know what gave me cancer, but I think what got me cancer is some of these chicks being so fucking boring. <laughs> I mean, why can't anyone have any fun anymore? Oh. I mean, the best times I've had was just, oh, there was a little person that I, oh, 
was just wonderful. He was clever. He was smart. He ran a circus. And <laughs> I, I wanted to talk about that at the dinner, at a lunch we had. And, you know, Carrie was la, 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 la. And Charlotte was <laughs> And Miranda was like, Please. And I said, I have got to get to London. I'm over these girls. Yeah. Sometimes friendships just <laughs> run their course. They run their course. And yeah. right now, you remember my boyfriend, Smith. Yes. <laughs> Blue eyes. Yes. Blonde. Hot as ever. Yes. Well, turns yes. out he was gay as well. Oh. But it's okay because he and his boyfriend now, we all live they together both fuck in you. London. Oh. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, we all oh. fuck and we have oh. a great time. That is just what, I mean, that's just Do you just think we should us. have a podcast? <laughs> yes. Smith, yes. his boyfriend and I. Yes. Okay. I'm going to look you into should. that. Yeah. Why not? So anyway, I found out that Big died. Well, we all knew he was going to die because I listened to Juicy Scoop. <laughs> and um, so it wasn't a surprise, but of course I felt terrible. I mean, who's going to want to date Carrie? <laughs> so um, I uh, sent some gorgeous flowers. I knew a florist that I used to do PR for. Sorry, I got a great discount, but I don't like to talk about that. And um, I sent them and I just said, love Samantha. I'm not going to get into it. I don't want to return her text. She knows I care about her. Mm -hmm. She remembers when I went down on her and her shoulder felt better. <laughs> we have a long history. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I thought that was just super classy and just said mm -hmm. it all. Love Samantha also could be the name of your podcast with Smith and his boyfriend. <laughs> you know what? I like the way you think. <laughs> I think I'm going to take that little class that Heather McDonald offered, mm. saying how to get a podcast for less than yes. $100. Yes. And I'm going to get the equipment, and I'm going to snuggle up on a London night and just talk about my sex capades. Yes. Love, Samantha. Yes. Mm. Wow. Well, this what the good news is is that you guys are going to be able to you have her number. You can uh, now do as many zooms as you want with her in London anytime a couple episodes in. And um yeah. I um just want to thank you for the dislocated shoulder. I just want to thank spasm. you for uh, it was spasm. A spasm. the spasm. I just want to thank you for that cuz uh, just in the cunnilingus. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, well, yeah, but the just the the shoulder. Okay, let's really... move on. Uh, Juicy Smollett. Oh. He uh, was convicted of five of the six counts, and they just did an interview with one of the jury members, and she just basically said there was just so much overwhelming evidence from the the brothers of how they did like a they did a run through. I mean, he's a he's a good actor. They practiced. They did a run through. They told he told they had a money exchange. They had text messages. They had all this evidence proving that the brothers were telling the truth. That he had the brothers help orchestrate this crime. The one person they didn't talk to is his friend who was who was with him, who called the police right when it happened. This guy named Frank, and they did not get. Frank never testified, and they were like, we would have liked to hear from Frank, but I think Frank would have just, I, I don't know, I wouldn't have helped his case, but um, he never testified. And then Don, Don, Len Don Lemon, he um, threw him under the bus after he, um, since it was proven that he, um, you know, is guilty, but Don had originally warned Jesse that the police were, quite, were thinking he was lying. Oh, he was the first person oh. who said... To warn him, and then Jesse said that on the stand, well, I knew from Don Lemon that they weren't believing, they were being suspicious, which made Don Lemon, as a reporter, look really bad. Oh. But then he, after he was convicted, he was like, well, this is terrible, and just like acted like he, they were never buddies, and they weren't text messaging friends. But he hasn't been um, sentenced yet, right? No, he's not been sentenced. I mean, it's going to be, mm. I think it's, they said three years to probation. Like, it's not going to be an enormous amount of time. It's going to be fines and probably How a long bit did time. Teresa Giudice go? A year. Okay. Well, so he we're better go for at least as at long least, as that. At that's least. A good, that's a good I mean, denominator of like, yeah. Well, it's like if... She inadvertently signed papers and had to go away for a year. Yeah. And he... You know, I guess you know he he wantingly yeah so he faked a hate crime. I he mean, did that so that uh, he could get a raise on on Empire. Empire. It's, yeah, it's, it's I mean, insane. it's just it, it is. And then someone brought up the great uh, uh, clip from Dave Chappelle's special 
where he he talked about it. Have you ever seen mm. when he talked about it? No. It's so funny. I don't remember he it. talked about it like maybe it came out like a year or so ago. And, you know, he's like, you know who weren't like really supporting him? He's like, was other black people because they were like, oh, wait a minute. It's below 23 degrees. <laughs> right. You're going to Subway to get a sandwich in the middle of the night by yourself in Chicago. There's rope and there's bleach. They let me just think about this. So then this came out. Um, this clip that put people put together. They blamed MAGA supporters. Do we get an apology now? And it was all the news clips from immediately after the story. And as you can see, oh. there I am at Wendy Williams, and this was the hot topic. Ooh. And I've talked about it before of my feelings that day being on Wendy Williams um, since it came out that, you know, he was under suspicion. And I was suspicious that day. You were? A hundred percent. Chris and I texted each other that day. And we both said, you know, we cannot ever talk about our suspicions. Yeah. But we were both suspicious. Mm. Was and it because it was because he left in the middle of the night to get subway across the railroad tracks in 23 degrees? Is that, <laughs> it, it, is, was, was that it, it was that. And then also that they said it. The way the report was written, like when we were in the debriefing, is there were two white masked men. And I'm like, well, if they were masked, how do you know that they're white? Mm. Well, they were wearing Magna hats. So I go, so they had a ski mask and then just one of those little red baseball caps over them running through the street. <laughs> like, I just kind of was like, and it just felt too, like, On almost like too perfect for the crazy time we were living in. And I just... I, I, yeah, I just was like suspicious of it. But when I questioned in the debriefing, I said, wait a minute, if they're masked, how do we know that they're white? And immediately they said, don't say, don't say that. <laughs> so I was like, no, no, I won't. Like I'll be, I'll, I'm going to be like the way you are when a woman claims sexual assault. Like I will believe you. It's horrible. So I think with everybody that was talking, myself included, I said, this is absolutely horrible. I hope that it's only two people. I'm afraid there might be more people involved. I did say, not in this clip, but I said, I know there's going to be more to this story that we're mm. going to find out. Because I was like, if I if my suspicions are right, but God forbid I question it, and it really was two awful people that did this. Like, I would look awful that I'm questioning this horrific right. crime. And I was just like, so I, I said, to me, this is domestic terrorism because you're freaking out the entire country. Yeah. And and then um, Ricky Smiley goes, I'm glad that you use that term domestic because it really is. But I was in my head being like, if this isn't true, it's going to divide us even more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I was like, Ugh. I didn't know what it was. But I knew it wasn't exactly what we were being fed. If I didn't. I didn't immediately think he faked it. I thought there was something more behind it. Yeah. I just knew it wasn't two hicks that decided to go to Chicago, right, and, and wait around the Jesse corner. Smollett. And the thing that that uh, Dave Chappelle said that was so funny is like he said that these two, you know, white racists, magnet hats, come up to him and say, "Aren't you that F A G G O T from Empire? Aren't you that N you know F A G from Empire?" And he's like, <laughs> White Hicks aren't watching <laughs> Empire. No, that's and he goes, true. and that's how he, that's how Dave Chappelle immediately was suspicious. Like, yeah. that's not who's, the, you're not on those people's radar. Like, that's not what they're watching or caring, if, even if they are those awful people. I feel like if he hadn't, just hadn't done the noose, it, he might not have gotten caught. Right? I, think I think the noose and the bleach. Oh, what was the bleach? That they threw bleach on him. Oh, it's, that's all just too much. It's too much. It's like, you know. And he had the Subway sandwich. He should have just done it a and little more And also, I'm like, I don't think he's a fan of Subway. Yeah. That yeah. didn't Someone, either. That someone's like, is he going to be, like, first there no. was Jared from Subway, <laughs> who became a child molester. He's doing time behind work. And then there's Jesse. Like, can Subway get a break? Yeah. They're a pretty a delightful sandwich shop. He <laughs> will be on Dancing with the Stars, however, when he gets out. <sighs> What do we that, what do we predict that, will happen to him? My prediction is that he will regardless how however long he spends in jail, he will then get out and go on dancing with the stars. He'll probably write a book, but I think he'll go on dancing with the stars because they calls love it criminals. Dancing with the criminals. 
That's okay. what she calls it. You think? <laughs> okay, but but here's the thing. <laughs> Had he, he is still saying he's going to appeal. He is still doubling down that he's innocent. So there wasn't that moment that some people come back from like, I learned, I'm sorry, now let me dance with the stars like (laughs) Olivia Jade. So I think, unfortunately, it's OnlyFans. Oh. That's it. Good one. Because he's still hot and he's still cute and there'll be guys that are attracted to him that will want to see him jack off or whatever. Yes. You don't think he's going to have a redemption story because his sister's a big actress and I think that will help him. Mm -hmm. You guys don't think he's going to... I think he could. I think he... I think... No. Mel Gibson still works. So many of these guys Here's the thing. But he can never go back and say, I'm sorry I lied because then he will have perjured himself which will be a whole other crime. That's true. So until he dies, he has to say... Is that true? Yeah, he lied on the stand. Oh, so... If he now went back and said, all right, you got me, I lied, that's like another whole crime. Mm. He put, you know, so mm. he, he, because he went with the thing of like, this is what happened, and a jury has decided we don't believe you, and 99% of America don't don't believe him. He's not going to win back people except on OnlyFans. Because <laughs> he is hot. He's cute. Yeah, he is hot. Um... Speaking of pervs, okay, so just uh, Josh Duggard got convicted. Good. I said he was looking at 20 years. They said, no, it's 20 years per count. So he's really looking at 40 years. Goodbye. But then his sister somehow, um, mm-hmm. they said his sister Jana has been charged with endangering mm-hmm. the welfare of a minor, but nobody knows what that was. It I'm be assuming anything. that her husband or whoever molested her kids. The Duggards need to all go into the garbage. Sorry. But – you don't. I or can't. I just do? want. Give, I can't even. Deal, I can't even deal. Or maybe she gave her but daughter. But it could be to something someone. totally different. It could have been leaving a kid in a car. We don't know. That's true. It could I, have been a, just opinion. a neglect thing. They they won't tell us what it is. Right, and it'll come out though. And yeah. each. I think that she's got seven. I think the main Duggard has seventeen kids. I think there's seventeen kids. Nineteen. I feel like you're saying Duggard so, with a D. Oh, Duggard. <laughs> Duggar. The reason Duggar. they have so many is because that that kind of religion. I know. It's all about they're not useful. They're not serving God unless they're like producing children. They're like a vessel for their husband. The husband is king. Like all and then like by <laughs> actually dying. having bad stuff happen to them, it's Don't like the dike. it's <laughs> like getting them closer to heaven because they're more of a uh. martyr. So the fact that his and then the wife is suffering like this. She's justifying her brain like I'm that much closer to like, you know, yeah. having an eternal lo- like being at the best, you know, VIP party with Jesus. Plus their husbands become the God. So each husband becomes their they get their own heaven. Oh. It's just a fuck. I can't. And I, then just I just I, can't, I just I can't. I just. This was something I <laughs> speak of only fans. Oh, only fans. I was following this story. So there is this oh, o- the only fan star that I talked about. She's twenty six. We came in here. We, we talked, talked about, about this. Okay, yeah. so good. There was this rich guy, and he's a billionaire, and he met this girl through kind of like a a woman that set them up. And he was like, I just want to pamper you, and you're 26, and she had OnlyFans. So she would do all these photo shoots, like, at his house, on his private jet, bring her hot girlfriends to Cabo, take all these photos. He loved it. He loved, according to her, loved showing off that he had this hot 26-year-old girlfriend. You know, he'd be like, she'd be, like, naked on a horse, and he'd be like, hey, look at my girlfriend naked on a horse taking some photos. Anyway, she claimed he got all of the friends like yeah, like a Chanel bag. That was, yes, that went, everyone got everyone uh, got the Chanel bags. Everyone went on the jet. Yeah, and then he really wanted to like take it to the next level and marry her and everything. And he wanted to spend New Year's Eve with her. And she's like, "No, I'm going to a TikTok party in Miami on New Year's Eve or an influencer party or something." And that's when he was like, "You know what? I don't know that this 26 year old loves me for me." <laughs> 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 and he got real pissed. And he then went after her financially. He said, I want all the gifts back, which he said was hundreds of thousands or a million dollars. And um, I want to sue you because you posted these photos for uh, OnlyFans on my property without my permission. So he goes hardcore after her with his billions. And this is the part that is really disturbing to me because in going, following like the GMAC, I'm going to call her GMAC well, okay, because everyone uh, says. Gislaine? I, I've been calling her Gislaine and people are like, can you get the name right? I'm like, it's a joke we came up with a year ago. I don't know who came up with it, <laughs> meaning like Jizz. Yeah, of course. But it, the real name is spelled 
Ghislaine, right? But who cares? What do we need to what respect? Jizz Lane Giz Maxwell? Lane. Who I cares? I call her G Max. Okay, I anyway. call her damn rapist. Talk about putting yeah. child but, in danger. But you know, between yeah. her and the Nygaard guy, the horrible Nygaard fashion guy, they intimidate these women so much, threatening to sue them if they, you know, counter suing that. Like, people are just quiet. So this is what happened. Her name's Stephanie Gerzan. She's 26. She filed an amended complaint last Friday mm. removing claims of assault and battery. So she had said that he had against him. So she said he's always oh. denied that there was any assault and battery. Now she's removing it. The change comes weeks after the Daily Mail exclusively revealed texts from the OnlyFans stars referring to her sexual encounter with Klubeck, the million, billionaire, as consensual. Texts show that... Garansky, Gar- Garzansky told the couple's matchmaker, Catherine Lee, that she let Klubeck go down on her on their date. Klubeck, former CEO of a timeshare company, Diamond Resorts, also launched a new copyright suit against his ex for selling nude photos taken on the property. He registered copyrights to 27 pictures and three videos shot by the wow. model's friend and one of her stri- uh, naked on a horse. <laughs> she had then countersued him in September, claiming that he performed oral sex on her without her consent on the night they met in July. So she said that, but then the text prove that consent. she told it to the girl, like, you know, bragging about it or whatever. So she counts, countersued him. The lawsuit came months after Klubeck 59 filed a complaint against her, claiming she duped him out of $1.3 million during their six-month courtship. And then her lawyer said that the rape claims weren't weren't removed because of the unearthed text, but because Gersansky could no longer rely on Lee as a witness who is the matchmaker. I don't even... What happened? I lost... I don't yeah. even okay. understand what so happened. So basically, I don't... I think she's <laughs> going to have off. to give back some money and things. But in, in her... In him suing her, she was like, well, you sexually assaulted me one night. And then he... Got all his lawyers and must have did a deposition and found text messages from mm-hmm. the uh, woman who set them up, who's obviously cooperating with his people, that proved that they had a conversation. Where it was like, yeah, I had a good time. He went down on me. <laughs> and that's what he she was trying to say, that he went oh, down on her without her consent. So then when she moves that, removes that, now her credibility is down. And, and what are you saying? That, that he threw his money like like I th- I think I, I, Here's the thing, people. Men, rich men, you know, know who you're getting involved with, you know, and, and, and to, like have some contract or something. That's kind of why sugar babies and stuff work. Cause like know what you're getting. Right. Yeah. And then right. for the girls, be really clear about gifts and stuff too. If they give you a bag, I'd almost like have some t- something in in writing or something or a gift <laughs> or mean, just being how like, does that work though? I don't know but like even if you're just dating just be like I love this so much I don't know how you could do it but like you know I don't know having some type of a record that you're not going to come after me and I do believe though she absolutely believe she had his um consent to take photos for her only fans he knew she was on he had them framed in his bedroom she- yeah, and and she said that he would. They would come home, and he would talk about how much money he made on the stock market, and then he'd be like, "How much money did you make on OnlyFans?" And he was kind of obsessed with how much money she was making mm. on OnlyFans. So he thought it was great. It was only when she really didn't want to spend time with him and and, him. and, and feel and maybe felt like, okay, I've taken the photos in all the places now. <laughs> so I don't really have anything left to do with you. Right. I'm ready to move on to the next billionaire and take, you know, naked photos in the snow in Aspen. You don't have a place in Aspen and I, ha- I need fresh content for OnlyFans. Yep. And once he realized that, he was like, oh, hell no. And in going after her, what's interesting is I think there's a lot of guys in his position, but they were too embarrassed to reveal that they were taken. He did not give a shit. And he's like, I'm going after this bitch because she broke my heart. And oh, I'm pissed. God, what a I, he's. I think it's. And he's I a think father it was bad. of three. I mean, and like the, and the little kids would come in there and see her naked titty pictures. I don't think up they were his... little, but still, they were older. But they did see it. But still, that's even worse now. You have like a 15 year old coming in, and you got like your boobs out. I mean, she did say she was horrified by that. Like she felt uncomfortable that he had these huge framed yes. pictures of her. Yeah, with like, and his kids would come in, and she'd be like, "I don't really need your like sons and daughters." <laughs> right. He's a vindictive prick. Yeah, for no reason, and only that he wants to be dominating and have control. Like everyone gets their heart broke. 
Right. Anyway. I don't know what to tell you. Meanwhile, this girl who's on 90 Day Fiance has made more money just selling her farts. So she no. farts in a jar and then mails it to you. What? Oh, no. And I guess it really works. I guess if you fart in a jar and really seal it, maybe you have one of those sealers, like people that do that make their own jam. You know, people are like, oh, I got a sealer. <laughs> like my mother-in-law used to make jam when she had her house. And I think you get like a special seal jar. And um, like a pick, like when people pickle things. Yeah. Maybe? <laughs> A because fart? I remember Marlon Wayne saying that he sent a fart to his friend or something, and it was still smellable. I cannot <laughs> believe this woman. I, I, I cannot. Is she hilarious? No, she it was like, like funny, a YouTube. When Marlon, when she was put on, Marlon Wayne's she, name with it. She was a bisexual. She was the first bisexual um, ninety day person that we saw, and she met with this other girl, and it felt <laughs> very much a YouTube moment. Like so, she's moved oh. on to selling farts and making a lot. Wow. Is there a sexual kink Perfect. in smelling farts? There has to be. I oh, mean, and I think she kind of realized it and tapped wow. the market. And she's just sitting around eating like baked beans. You know and, who's like, going to have to be soup. selling some farts soon? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And he'll buy them. The thing is, here's your audience. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yes, Stephanie. Get, That's right. Or get, Stephanie, why why so many Uber Eats deliveries of Brussels sprouts are coming to your house, girl? Oh my I god. I gotta pay for those legal bills. And yeah. she made a horrible business decision. I'm like, bitch, you ain't gonna have OnlyFans forever. Like That's honestly, true. grab your billionaire. Well, she's a he was completely in love with her. It's get like, knocked up. Yeah, just doesn't work for everybody though. Let's No. Okay, okay, let's I'll enjoy talk watching about... herself farts, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Sec, uh, Real Housewives of OC was on. Oh, I, I mean, people have talked about, it, but there's just this one moment that literally was one of the scariest moments I've ever seen on <laughs> reality TV. This girl Nicole gets put on the show, and Shannon Bedore finds out, remembers, or finds out, or the producers told her, or something. That 16 years ago, she got a boob job from Terry Dubrow and filed a lawsuit. When I was a model. Yes. <laughs> Did you see it? Uh, yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. So then, so then she comes on as Heather Dubrow's friend. Yeah. And Shannon Dubrow is like, I don't know how to tell <laughs> Heather Dubrow that this girl filed a lawsuit against her husband. But I said, I shut it down. Shut it down. <laughs> Keep it quiet. And um, and genius like Shannon told me that she filed a lawsuit against your husband, and I wouldn't want her eating my sushi from Nobu. So I'm just telling you. And then Heather Dubro is like, "Is this happening right now?" <laughs> and she's just furious because she's like, "Holy fuck! I agreed to go on the show because you guys were in the shitter." I show you my house. I have fucking Nobu here. And now this is going to be part of the show that at one time Terry was sued. Sure, doctors get sued. But no matter what, just being sued doesn't look great. Also, so he's on a show called Botched. Yeah. <laughs> and now he basically got sued for botching a boob job. Mm-hmm. So she's like, shut it down. And she goes running up the steps. Meanwhile, this girl, Nicole, is just a shell of herself she's absolutely crying she's not a reality star like you know vet freaking out and which was clear when well, she said sit, sit down. down girl sit, sit down, down. And, to, right and then where she was like and Gina's like but I'm, she is sitting down I'm sitting that's what she I'm looks sitting. like when she's sitting that's I'm what sitting. I know it's weird but that's what she looks like when she's the sitting. funniest <laughs> thing that Emily said was Emily goes she looks like me, but smaller. <laughs> yeah, we were like, what? No, she does, what? kind of. She does. Like, no, they kind of have a similar, like, eyebrow, like, face. I didn't see it. I anyway. couldn't. I didn't, I, I didn't see it. Um, but, mm, I mm. love that, too. The other fun thing, when she goes, I've been nice to you all night. And then Nicole <laughs> goes, bitch, I've known you for 20 <laughs> minutes. I thought that was so funny. Mm-hmm. So, this She's, is. I've been your friend all night. Yeah. Like, friend? I've been your friend all night. <laughs> Girl, I've known you for 20 minutes. Oh, well, that doesn't give you the right. <laughs> she was just so... She's like, why don't you sit down? I am sitting down. <laughs> that's what she looks like. She's yeah, that's a good Emily. You know what? I don't need to take this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and then she gets up and she leaves. And she she's going. And then when she's talking to... And then Gina's the like, friend, Emily, oh, Gina. Emily. No! 
That is how it's gonna go. <laughs> no, this I know you're upset, friend. but it's really about Shannon. No. Shannon said it. Shannon. We came here together. Also, she <laughs> we came here together. And you and me are friends till the end, okay? All right. Well, I mean, I'm just trying to say. Where's my car? <laughs> Where is my car? There isn't valet here. I don't care if there isn't valet here. I want my car. That's how there's driveway. Where Literally, they're in her driveway looking for the car. Where's, then so she's then... like, where's my bag? I don't have my bag. That was then this, so then this. <laughs> so then she talks to Shannon. Oh. And she's like. Heather, mm. I never intended <laughs> on hurting you. That's why I told Gina not to say anything. And she's like, but Shannon, you idiot. You already told him. Therefore, it's already on the show. Whether it gets revealed at my house or not, you already put – you were the one that put it out on the show, you idiot. Why wouldn't you have just called me on the phone and been like, hey – so this girl sued you like 16 years ago. <laughs> Do you care? Are you like over it? Do you like, should I bring this up in the show? Or yeah. like, absolutely not. No, because the producers were probably like, yeah. So then I think the producers ran up to the stairs and was like, Heather, listen, we already knew all this. You forgot. Here's all the stuff. She does drop it. So just go down and make, and make sure that they know. So she's crying. She's like, <laughs> and then. Terry and Heather and the way they film it. <laughs> but don't forget, before you go on. Yes, please. Don't forget that when Terry came home in his leather jacket without a collar <laughs> or a motorcycle, he, he, he goes, I got to go to bed, everyone. Early morning surgery. Good night. He leaves. This all goes down. She gets him. He's still in the leather jacket when they go to confront Little nose or whatever her name is. <laughs> Juicy. Yeah. Just yeah. when he went up the stairs with the stanchion, yes. red carpet stanchion <laughs> in front of it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you blocked your stairs off with a red carpet stanchion. Yes. Yep. Also worth taking a look at. Worth taking a look at. Do you know one of the greatest things that ever happened is my friend told me that many years ago she went to a party at a town home mm. and it was just like a holiday party and they had a red roped off part of the smaller living room that had like the better <laughs> wine at it and it was a town home in like santa clarita oh my god not not the ro- red roped off at the town so home. they had the rope off like make sure no one goes up these stairs that's where our wine yes. um closet is that's where our so wine she, is so then when they come down holding okay. hands oh. and then they kneel down she's crying and he's like did you stew me i like peed in my pants i was terrified and she's like I had these managers that made me. No, he goes. He goes. Oh, Nicole Nic- Weiss. <laughs> are you Nicole Weiss? <laughs> you sued me. Yeah, and their faces are like, and like, the close up of everyone's. Oh face my god, the like- eyeballs! I was just like, I'm terrified of both sets of your eyeballs. Like that's what scared me. Mm. And then, and they go, but you, you know, and you dropped it. Thanks for dropping it. And then they both go, ha! And I think, <laughs> like, people kept showing that clip, like, on their Instagram meme accounts. And it, it is terrifying. And she's just sitting there still just crying and, like, fucking shell-shocked. Oh, they don't. And, and she keeps like, I was a young model. Yeah. And my attorneys advised me. I'm like, like what? I was a young model once, too. And I <laughs> never had any attorneys. I guess we have, were different types he of did, models. And he said complication. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing is just very, very. And I, we love terror. I live and die for terror. I want to. Like, I want to say for, for the terror. record, I introduced my friend to Terry Debro. She got her boobs redone and was beyond thrilled with the experience and the result. So yes, people get sued and you yeah, know, whatever, yeah, absolutely. But so it's like I, you know, it just this. This was well. Just I want to say I'm here for Shannon. I know nobody yes. wants that take, but yes. I felt like Shannon was drunk and that's one thing i love about her and when they showed her like walking back <laughs> oh. <laughs> wait the hair the ponytail like shannon listen i i if she and i'm sure she does listen to this and i really do we we like love shannon Bedore, but that erica jane pony down to the waist <laughs> just, i literally it's, it's, here, a, it's gonna be a no here, i want to talk to all, all the housewives and the glam squads <laughs> yeah yeah it's fine that everyone's getting glam mm-hmm 
stop going down exactly the Erica Jane route. Stop going down with these long, crazy from selling sunset. Stop going down with these long, crazy ponytails and hair pieces. Oh my God. And like, come on, wigs. get your makeup and hair yeah, done. Exactly. Maybe throw in some extra clip ons mm-hmm. for a special occasion. Maybe do something like a little bit cool Sharon and different. Need all that. But She's not pretty. you do not need the fucking Mrs. Piggy wig. No. Okay. And like, Nicole Weiss <laughs> went hiking in like nighttime glam. <laughs> I was like, bitch, you're hiking. Get it together. It's well, amateur. You're gonna look your there. cutest. You're on oh, TV. Oh, it was, and she's like messing with her hair the whole time. I'm like, I mean, and he- and there's Heather, the vet, like not too much. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. She did a daytime glam, a hiking glam. You know Shannon, right? You know Shannon. Oh, I think I met her <laughs> one time. Like then during that hike, is yeah, it was like Shannon. I really felt Shannon was sincere. I thought when she was giving her testimonials, she doesn't, she didn't want to hurt anyone. I don't think she wanted to hurt them. She was just, she's like, no. I any, but listen, it started off the, the you know. season good, so I'm down for it. This is such a hilarious, juicy story. Okay, hilarious and sad. Okay, this woman fucked over her daughter hardcore. Oh. She stole her identity. <gasps> she was 48. She sold, st- stole her 22 year old daughter's social security card and identity. Went to college. Got financial aid, had 22 year old boyfriends. I mean, it's straight out of the show Younger. And so she's in trouble now for stealing her daughter's ID, identity, but also because she got financial aid, free books, all this stuff, was going to college, working at a library, living her best life. Look at the photo they have her like wearing those little like ears. <laughs> oh, my looks, God. The hell? She looks, but these guys said they didn't know. Like, they didn't know she wasn't. 42? No. I guess guys are just so happy to have someone like them. 48, by the way. She was 48. I mean, I don't think she... I do think she doesn't look 48. I I think she looks younger than 48. But But I always always, like try to tease Drake. And when we're out, I'm like, did you think what that person said? He's like, what? He's like... They were like, oh, how long have you you and your boyfriend been out for? He's like, what? What are you talking about? Like, I just constantly do it. I'm like, we'll be like getting in and out food and stuff. And I'm like... Yes, thank you. Um, my boy and my boyfriend will have and like I just like and he's like what? I'm like why? Why couldn't it happen? Like I don't have makeup on. I just got a facial. I have a baseball cap oh, and shorts. You don't really know. Um, <laughs> but where was the daughter? I'm, I, I don't understand. Did she kill the daughter? Yeah, was she? I, a no, I guess they were estranged. No, the daughter's alive, but like she took credit cards. The girl she ruined her daughter's credit, oh, my and they got da- the mother and. The mother and daughter were estranged because she said, oh, I was a victim of domestic violence, whatever, but then d- did all this, live this second life. I always, I mean, what can I, I say? Where's sto- Saskatoon? Oh, Phoenix. Is it in Phoenix? Where is it? No, this? this was in Missouri or something. Oh, okay. But they, I'm always obsessed with things where people just like create a whole new identity and then they mm. make themselves younger. My favorite was that little, um, she was a dwarf that the, the mother said they adopted her from Russia, Russia and they said that they thought they were adopting a six-year-old dwarf, but then they'd give her a bath and she had like full pubic hair. <laughs> <laughs> she pretended she was six, but she was like 20. Yes. <laughs> she was like, she was like 20. But I need you to wash up. Hey, dad, new dad. <laughs> new dad. Hold on. New dad, new mom. I don't know what happened. I was she, in, I was at daycare. The she was like, at, yeah. She was like asking for Barbies and dolls and stuff. And then they're like, no, you're too old. And then they like, it was this big long story. She was on Doctor oh. Phil. This other family adopted her. God. They still believe that she's like now. She they say now she's like fourteen or whatever. But she's they the other family's like no. Now she's like thirty. <laughs> Not the six year old with the full pubes. Okay, and they said that she no. was like violent. No. And then they would like, and then she would like be hiding like her period pants and stuff. <laughs> And they're like, how is a six-year-old like... Full She's egg- like, can I get some tampons? I need yeah. some tampons. I got two more years till menopause and I got to make this count. New dad, come here. I got to talk to you for a minute. Yeah, I always... Oh. Yeah, and then I remember there was this other story. Like, I remember my mom reading to me in the LA Times and there was this girl and I've looked for it like mm. on Google and I can't find it, but there was a girl that um, I was like maybe 22 or something the story came out and this girl um, claimed to be 18 and and she got this huge deal with like Disney or they just gave her this huge writing deal, this overall deal because they're like, I can't believe this girl is, you know, 18 and can write so well. And we finally have someone from like that can write like a young person's perspective. But she was like 31 Ugh. and totally got fake papers and everything so that she'd look like a genius 
And then they realized she was older and was lying. But that's why she was getting the deal because of her age. And you can't find that story anywhere? I cannot. Somebody, listen, a Juicy Scooper will find it. Yeah. It happened like at least 20-something years ago. And it was like she got a big writing Hollywood deal and she was pretending to be like 18, 19. That, I got to say, deserves, deserves some respect. Yeah. That deserves, you as a woman in this town, you, you can yeah. say, I would go in and pretend to be anything. Yeah. I'm a 12-year-old Egyptian boy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. New to this country. <laughs> This is crazy in here. I don't know. I'm just 12. I'm a boy. And yeah, you got a job for me? Yeah. I'll do it. When it comes to work, especially in the entertainment industry, I think it's well, it's a, a you ball know, for like, you do whatever why, you need why, to do. Why does it matter who you are? If, you, if your writing's good, your writing's good. But yeah. there's so much of it. Another thing, even as a writer, like, mm-hmm. oh, we've got the genius writer, you know, like the, the, whole, pers- the whole actual identity that goes with the writing. But um, I love you guys. I'm glad you're still together. I <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, um, it was all your too. Christmas party that brought us back together. Oh my god! It was like I was like I don't know. We we might be done forever. But then I was like, oh God, but Heather's Christmas party. We're only stronger for anyone that's worried. That's right. We went through. You know what I mean? Like hey. there's. Hey. Well, look, you know what? I'm glad that you didn't break up like Carrie and I did. Because I thought we were just having a little bit of a riff. You know, I was like, really? You're not going to do another book? What are you going to do? A podcast? Turns out she did a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no place for me. So I got on a plane and I went to London and I got some English dick. <laughs> Sausages, please. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody follow Brandy and Julie. Listen to, gu- listen to Dumb Gay Politics. Yep. Oh, God. Go go to our Patreon if you don't like politics and nobody does and no one in the world. <laughs> so just go to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash dumb gay politics. We don't talk politics None. there. We we don't do juicy scoops at all, but we just do our weird adventures. Love it. Bye-bye. <laughs>